Trusted President Pedro Castillo requested a meeting with the delegation of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. President-elect of Brazil, Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva, announced the names of 60 new members of his coming government. And after Russian authorities carried out investigations on the scene, President Vladimir Putin has described the attacks on Nord Stream 2 gas pipelines as an act of terrorism. Hello, welcome to Telesur English. I am Estefania Bravo from the headquarters of Quito in Ecuador. This is from the South. The ousted president of Peru, Pedro Castillo, who is in preventive detention for 18 months, requested on Wednesday the delegation of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights visit him urgently. The former president, who's facing a judicial process for the alleged crime of rebellion, said in a message posted on his Twitter account that he's arbitrarily deprived of his rights. Castillo asked for a meeting, noting that despite the commitment of the Inter-American Commission, no contact with him has been established. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador revealed to the press on Thursday the issues to be discussed at the next January 9th summit with the U.S. and Canadian counterparts Joe Biden and Justin Trudeau, respectively. López Obrador explained that the first point on the agenda will focus on consolidating economic, commercial, and financial development, not only in North America, but in all the American continent. Secondly, the leaders will deal with a program to support the poor in Latin America and the Caribbean to find job opportunities in order to avoid migration. In Bolivia, indigenous people warned about the risk of extinction of native languages acknowledged in the political constitution of the plurinational state. The aboriginal group claims that this is the result of factors such as globalization, mining, pollution, and lodging. Alex Vilca, spokesman for Contiocap, also stated that of the 36 indigenous languages, the Guarani language, which is still present in the villages of Argentina and Paraguay, is the least vulnerable. The spokesman explained that the situation is quite worrying because many villages have already disappeared due to the constant pressure from mining, lodging, and agriculture. After confirming the arrest of Gabriel Salinas, alleged gunman in the murder of the Piraguayan anti-corruption prosecutor Marcelo Pecci, the Venezuelan vice president for citizen security and peace Remigio Ceballo said that they are coordinating with Colombia and Paraguay to further investigate the case. The Bolivarian government, in coordination with the Colombian government, has been working and we have now started the interconnection to gradually take this case because these people are confessing and new criminalistic and forensic elements are emerging that will allow us to provide the Colombian government and the Paraguayan government with all the necessary information on these highly dangerous individuals who are currently in detention. Remigio Ceballos also stated that the alleged gunman in the murder of the Paraguayan prosecutor Marcelo Pecci will be judged in Venezuela as the Constitution stipulates. It is also necessary to know that in Venezuela, Article 69 of the Constitution strictly prohibits the extradition of Venezuelan men and women. Therefore, these citizens will be judged by the Venezuelan judicial system in renewal que tiene todas las capacidades para poner a orden de la justicia a estos a estos sujetos criminales y que, por supuesto, sean castigados con el, todo el peso de la ley.
In Colombia, the leader of the Mana Survivors Foundation, an organization of relatives of victims of forced disappearance, has, has been assassinated. Jose Ricarte Quintero was killed in the early hours of Wednesday, December 21st, in the streets of Armenia, Department of Quindio. His 17-year-old son was slightly wounded in the attack, but has already been discharged from the hospital. The victims were, were riding a motorcycle when the assailant came out from behind a bus and shot them and ran away. President-elect Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva announced to the press on Thursday the names of 16 new ministers for his future government. A total of 21 ministers have already been appointed. Lula emphasized his intention to make a government with all the political forces that took part in his campaign. He also reiterated his administration's priority to take care of the poor and the working people. The president-elect also informed that he will work with the national president of his party, Glacey Hoffman, to announce the remaining ministers by next week. In Argentina, the organization Grandmothers of Plaza de Mayo dedicated to the location of the children stolen and illegally adopted during the country's last military dictatorship announced on Thursday they have found the 131st child. According to local media, the activists will hold a press conference to continue the identity of their new grandchild. The new institution comes more than three years after the last finding occurred in June 2019. The social movement headed by Estela de Carlotto reported that they have now restored a new identity from the estimated 500 appropriated children. We're taking our first break now. Uh, join us again after this. And also, don't forget to follow us on our TikTok account at Telesur English for more. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Russian President Vladimir Putin described the attacks on the Nord Stream gas pipeline as an act of state terrorism. During a press conference, the Russian president pointed out high-level structure support of the perpetrators. The head of state also indicated his country had the opportunity to examine the scene of the explosions. However, there has been no full international investigation to clarify the facts so far. On September 26th, Nord Stream 2 AG, the operator of the Russian gas pipeline of the same name reported a mysterious gas leak in one of the two pipelines of the infrastructure near the Danish island of Borholm. The Russian Foreign Ministry stated on Thursday that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's visit to Washington showed both Ukraine and the U.S. are determined to continue hostilities with Moscow. The purpose of the visit was predictable. Zelensky came to demand new financial military assistance. He didn't even come to demand. He was brought by those to whom this financial assistance, as a result, will go, by those to whom this money will then return to a conditional base, both in military and figurative sense of the word. They drag him there like a doll, show it to everyone, and put him back on the plane and send him off. On Thursday, the Central Bank of Russia informed that the use of Mir payment system card is now accepted in 10 countries of the world and its implementation is being assessed in 11 others. According to the financial institution, Mir cards are currently accepted in European Belarus and nine Asian countries, including Armenia, Vietnam and South Korea. The Russian institution specified that their use is not the same in all the countries, as in some of them, the cards work only in ATMs, while in others, they can be used in banks connected to the national payment system. Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban has called for the abolition of the European Parliament to restore public trust following a recent corruption scandal. Orban proposed dissolving the current parliament and creating a new one with national delegates. He also said that a new European Parliament made up of only national delegates would ensure greater oversight, accountability and credibility. On his part, European Parliament President Joseph Borrell denied either his or the parliament's involvement in any corruption.
In Italy, a new civil rescue ship brought 142 asylum seekers to disembark in the Tuscan coastal town of Livorno on Thursday. The arrival marked the first mission of the life support. The 51-meter-long rescue ship launched by Italian charity Emergency on December 13th. The people saved, including 109 men, 7 women, and 26 minors, were rescued in two separate operations on Sunday and Monday in the central Mediterranean Sea. Their countries of origin include Bangladesh, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Egypt, Eritrea, Mali, Pakistan, and Somalia. Pope Francis affirmed on Thursday that in the name of no God can a war be declared holy. After recalling the case of Ukraine together with other conflicts that are taking place in various parts of the world. In the traditional Christmas audience of the Roman Curia, the Supreme Pontiff expressed that there is a great uh, desire for peace in the present. From the Hall of Blessings and the Vatican, Francis stated that religion must not lend itself to feed conflicts and added the gospel is always the gospel of peace. About 200,000 holidaymakers will be affected at the upcoming Christmas weekend as rail workers in France will go ahead on a planned strike on Friday over the rising inflation and lowering purchasing power. Due to the scheduled strike, France's national state-owned railway company announced that one out of three high-speed trains will be canceled on Friday. Meanwhile, about 40% of high-speed trains will be suspended on Saturday and Sunday. The company also said that the weekend strike will affect a cross-border line, inner-city trains, and metro lines as well. India's health ministry said on Thursday it began randomly testing international passengers arriving at the airports for COVID-19, citing an increase in cases in neighboring China. Health, the health minister announced a new rule in parliament where he also urged state governments to increase surveillance for any new coronavirus variants and to send samples of all positive cases to uh, genome sequ sequencing labs. We're taking our last break now. Join us again after this. And also, don't forget to follow me on my Twitter account at Ibrava Telesur for more. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South, more news now. During her visit to Beijing, Australia's Foreign Minister Pini uh, Wong said her government wants to normalize relations with China. Her statement came amid the first visit by an Australian official to the Asian giant in four years. The government's made clear that we believe it's in Australia's interest for our relationship with China to be stabilised. We've also made clear we believe it is in China's interest for the relationship to be stabilised. Uh, we've continued to express the view that the comprehensive strategic partnership between Australia and China uh, is architecture for dialogue and for engagement uh, which uh, will benefit both countries. We've continu continued to uh, put the view uh, that we are able to grow our bilateral relationship and uphold our respective national interests if we navigate our differences wisely. And that is the challenge for this generation, is to navigate those differences wisely. Malaysia, the death toll rose to 30 after a landslide in the city of Atan Kali in the state of Selangor. According to the authorities, seven other people are still missing. Officials said that 680 search personnel, police and firefighters are continuing to work on the situation. The causes of the incident, which occurred at an organic farm near the capital, Kuala Lumpur, are so far unknown.
and the governments of Iran and Russia agreed to build a river communications network from Eastern Europe to the Indian Ocean to promote international trade in the face of Western sanctions. Both countries are spending billions of dollars to speed up cargo delivery along rivers and railways linked to the Caspian Sea. Ship tracking data compiled by Bloomberg shows dozens of Russians and Iranian ships, including some subjected to sanctions, already play the route. This Thursday, Israeli military forces killed 23-year-old football player Ahmad Atif Mustafa Daragma during a military raid in the northern West Bank city of Nablus. The young man played for Takafi, a football team from the town of um, Tal Karim. Confrontations erupted when numerous Israeli military and police swept into the area to protect settlers who had broken into the Patriarch Joseph's tomb. In the operation, they also wounded at least another 24 Palestinians. Uganda received a new shipment of the Ebola vaccine from the World Health Organization. Uganda's health authorities announced changes in the strategy used to deal with the Ebola outbreak in the country. The local representative of the United Nations said that Uganda is able to organize a test of the Sudan strain of the Ebola vaccine. The last confirmed patient with the disease was discharged from the hospital on November 30th last week. Health restrictions were lifted in the two central districts where the measure was still in force. Comoros will assume the presidency of the African Union in 2023, the first time the organization appoints an island nation to such a position. The event comes after Kenya withdrew its presidency candidacy, leaving the way open for Comoros' proposal. Comoros' president expressed his gratitude to Kenya and said that this decision showed Nairobi's commitment to promote unity and stability in the East African region. Uh, AU president's heads of assemblies biannual summit represents the continent in various international forms. And with that story, we've come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesoenglish.net. And also be sure to follow us on our socials. We're on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Tresor English, I am Estefania Bravo. Until next time.